All right, guys. Today we are going to be checking the supercharger slip moment um, on a SeaDoo GTR 230. The process is fairly similar for uh, all the SeaDoo's. Um, the SeaDoo 300s have a slightly different process. Uh, the supercharger nut there's a there's a, an additional supercharger nut essentially um the 230s and before do not there's only one nut on there but i'll show you that into the video um this is a 2021 cdu gtr has 100 hours on it or just under 100 hours um i'm checking this slip on it just because it's my brother ski trying to maintain it um really bad day because it's ice cold out it's probably 17 degrees right now but you know i got something to do um, you do not need to check the slip on these superchargers until 200 hours. So realistically, he can go another 100 hours on this thing um, if he wanted to, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, when you check the slip, uh, SeaDo actually has a specification, and I'll put the, put the specification on an image. Um, I know for a fact that for the 230 post break-in, the supercharger slip moment is between 8 and 12 newton meters. Um, so we're going to check to see where it's at there. Uh, and then adjust if necessary. Um, now, if you are beyond 200 hours and you check the slip and it's way off, um, you I, I highly recommend you send it off to either get rebuilt or just buy a new supercharger and put it in. Uh, because if those moments or if those um, slip washers break or if any part of that supercharger breaks apart, you'll see, I mean, it's mounted directly into the engine. Parts of it can break off, get into the engine and, uh, you know, it's bad news from there. So. Check your supercharger slip moment at 200 hours. If you want to be proactive, you could do it beforehand. Um, like I said, this has just under 100 hours, so I'm going to do it, and we'll see what the slip moment comes back at. But uh, let's go ahead and we'll get started. It occurred to me that I never explained to you guys what the slip moment was uh, on a supercharger. So um, we're just going to use this image here so I can explain it. This is not my picture. This is just one I found online. Um, and when I say slip moment, what I'm referring to is the moment at which these slip washers, the clutch of the supercharger will begin to slip um, under load. So the way the CDU supercharger works is you have your primary gear here. This will connect to the engine through the PTO. Um, and then this, is, this only connects to the shaft of the CDU or shaft, shaft of the supercharger through these friction washers. Um, and then the actual shaft passes through the housing up to the compressor wheel. Um, so obviously you do not want a straight mechanical connection, um, of the, uh, supercharger to the engine, because with all the rapid RPM changes and the hard acceleration, deceleration, um, the forces on the shaft, uh, with the supercharger spinning at 50,000 RPM will just completely shatter it. Um, so you need something to dampen those forces. Uh, and that's where these friction washers come into play. So when we set the slip moment. Essentially, we are just telling the um, uh, supercharger when it should slip or when it should begin when it should begin to slip. Um, we don't want it too high because if the slip moment is too high, that means it's going to take more force for the clutch washers to slip, and you're putting more stress on the on the shaft. Uh, but if it's set too low, um, you're not going to be able to build your maximum amount of boost. You can overheat these washers and burn them out faster. Um, that's why when we check the slip moment, you want to try to get it closer to the upper end of the threshold. Uh, that way you make sure that you're hitting the peak boost, but you're also not putting too much stress on uh, the washers here. Um, because eventually these washers will wear out. They just won't have any friction material left, and that's when you can start to suffer performance loss. Uh, that's where this slip adjustment comes into play. Obviously, if the slip adjustment doesn't work or if you're beyond the service hours, uh, it's best to just have your supercharger rebuilt. Replaced. All right, so you are going to need a supercharger gear holder. It'll whatever gear you need will depend on the version that you have. Um, the SeaDoo GTR 230 will use this guy here. Um, the SeaDoo 300, or I shouldn't say GTR. It's any engine that's a 230 is going to use this marriage here, um, and then your 300s are going to use this one here. And then you have to have something to uh, hold. There's a nut in there that you can hold, and that's how you can make your adjustments. Um, you need a mounting plate. This is what the supercharger is going to mount to, and we're going to put it in a vise so we can make the adjustments and check the slip. Um, and then you need a digital torque wrench uh, because you, the analog ones, you're never going to get accurate enough. Digital ones, you can get it down to like within a tenth of a pound, which is what you want to measure down to. 
Um, I'll put parts, part numbers for these things in the uh, video description. So if you're looking to do this yourself, you'll know exactly what you need to buy. Um, and then to get the supercharger out, you're gonna need a, a quarter inch socket and then a quarter inch uh, spanner, just something real small. Uh, some of the, one of the bolts is pretty hard to get to. So you want it to be uh, like a thin profile one. Um, there's three, I believe three bolts that are holding the supercharger in and then um, it'll kind of just slide right out of the housing. I'll show you that. Um, and then once we have it out, bring it over. Um, if we need to make any adjustments, we have to use a, uh, I forget the exact size, like a 17 millimeter or something like that, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, anyway, let's get the tools outside and let's get the supercharger off. I really picked the wrong time of year to work on this outside. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, get started here. So we need to remove the uh, supercharger outlet hose. Uh, you don't have to remove it from the intercooler side, just the outlet on the supercharger. And then the supply uh, hose here. So just remove these two guys uh, first to get them out of the way. Okay, we have the two hoses off. Next thing we're going to remove is the vent, the crankcase vent. Um, you can do this without removing this, but it's a real pain to get to that bolt down there, uh, which is on the back side of the supercharger. Uh, and by the way, once I get the supercharger out, I'll show you the location of where the bolts are around it. Um, I just find that it's easier to remove the crankcase vent just to get it out of the way. So let's take that off now. All right, I just pushed the uh, crankcase vent off to the side there. Uh, I do want to let you know when you are pulling that off, just to be careful, if you look inside, there's a metal plate on the cam gear. Um, in later models, that's kind of, it's held in there. Uh, but you just want to be careful when you pull off the breather, don't pull too hard uh, because if that plate comes out, it can slide down into the bottom of the engine uh, and that's a total pain in the ass to get out. So uh, pull it out slowly and just make sure that that plate is still there uh, when you get that breather off. So next thing we're going to do is start to remove the supercharger bolts. And the first one I'm going to start on is this guy right here. Um, and I'm just going to use my quarter inch and kind of just slowly slowly um you know small twist at a time back that off the first time you do it, it's gonna be a little hard just because of the amount of loctite they use um but either way it still comes out just take your time uh so i'm gonna do that now and then i'll show you the next bolt you have to take out all right we got that first bolt out the next one we are going to remove is uh, it's kind of hard to see but uh, that top one there uh, in the far back. So that one right there that's kind of right next to that green thing. There's two. Uh, one of them is on the compressor wheel and one is behind the compressor wheel. You want to hit the one behind the compressor wheel, the one that's actually mounting it to the engine. Um, and again, I'll, I'll post these, I'll send a picture on the, on the video once I'm removing these uh, so you can kind of see which ones I'm hitting as I go. So let's go ahead and get that bolt out now. Okay, we got that pulled out, and now the last one is directly at the bottom of the supercharger. It's going to be hard to see in person, not on camera, so you just kind of have to feel it with your hands. Uh, and then once you take that bolt out, you can loosen the, uh, or remove the supercharger. So let's get that one out, and then I'll show you what the next step is. All right, the last bolt is removed, and you can see the supercharger is nice and loose. So all we're gonna do is slide the supercharger this way and just kind of lift it out. So I'm gonna try to get that on video. I'm not sure if it's gonna work out, but let's see what we can do. There it is. All right, and with the supercharger out, you can kind of see where those mounting uh, posts were. So you had one, uh, let's see, supercharger goes like this. So you have one at the very bottom, right there. You have another, and you can see how it kind of sits at the back of the supercharger there. Uh, and then you have the backwards facing one there that you would hit from the top. So I'll still put a diagram up just so you guys can see. Um, but uh, here is, the engine with the supercharger removed and you can see where it kind of goes into the PTO housing there. Um, that's all loose and easy to get to now. So let's go ahead, we'll bring this in and I'll show you how to check the slip. All right, so the next thing we want to do is get the supercharger mounted to our backing plate. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is go ahead and lay this in just like that. And we're going to use the bolts that came out of the supercharger, these guys here, uh, to just thread this in and basically get it lined up. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, right off the bat, I just want to show you that uh, it looks like this one sucked up salt water at some point. Because uh, you can see, I mean, there's a sand and very, I mean, low amounts of corrosion in there. But you can see it got sucked in on the compressor wheel. So I'm going to get this cleaned out. Everything else looks fine. I mean, there's no, there's no shaft play at all. There's no forward and backward shaft play. Everything on here looks fine. Um, even the, uh, the friction washers, they all look fine. Everything on here is perfect aside from that small amount of whatever it sucked in. Uh, so I'm obviously going to get that cleaned out, but uh, first let's get this prepped. I'll show you what we're going to do for uh, checking the slip moment. All right, so in the service manual, it's saying that for a 230 engine, uh, post break-in, you should be looking for anywhere between 8 to 12 newton meters. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, um, again, digital torque wrench, put it onto a 17 millimeter socket, which is just going to sit on to the compressor wheel nut. Um, we'll lock this in there. And then we're gonna take our, oh geez, where did I put it already? We're gonna take our, um, the wrench that works for the, this, again, this is a CDU uh, 230 supercharger. So this wrench is for the 230 engine. And we're just going to slide it onto the gear that would normally connect to the PTO. And essentially all we're gonna do is just twist the supercharger wheel and see what measurement comes out on uh, the graph here. We want to see anywhere between 8 and 12. I'm going to shoot for a higher uh, spec. So if it's if it's closer to 8 or if it's lower than 8 for some reason, I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to try to get it as close to 12 newton meters as I can. So let's go ahead and we'll take a measurement now. All right, we'll see what we get. Oh, of course, it's timed down already. 9.5, 9.6, All right, so it seems around nine, so nine and a half. So that's definitely still within range. Remember, the range is anywhere between eight and twelve. Um, but I'm going to bump this up anyway. So I just want to get it as close to twelve as we can. Um, that'll give us, you know, it helps out the life of the supercharger, but it can also, if it is not hitting peak boost tightening those washers so that they slip less should help us hit peak boost. Um, since 9.5 is still within spec, we should be hitting full boost, um, but just to help prolong the life of the friction washers, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them anyway. All right, so to tighten the friction washers on the 230 supercharger, all we need to do is slide this piece in to that center washer, which has a divot in it, and that's gonna prevent the whole housing or the whole shaft from spinning as we're tightening the the nut here. On the two, on the 300 supercharger, there's actually a separate lock nut on the end. Um, you would have to remove that first, and then you can tighten the center nut. Um, on the 230, there is no there there's no outer nut, so we're just going to clamp the whole shaft so that it doesn't move, and then we'll tighten that nut. We only do a tiny adjustment. We'll check the slip again. If we need to improve it again, we'll go ahead and tighten it more. You just don't want to do too much. And remember, if the if the torque or if the slip moment is too high, you'll put a lot of stress on that shaft and you risk snapping it when you're doing high RPM. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll get this thing tightened up. Now it's tightened. Let's go ahead and we'll check the slip again. Yep, and that's perfect. That's exactly where we want it. All right, so slip is adjusted. I just brought it up to 12, uh, which is again um, a factory uh, on the high end. So between 8 and 12. So we brought it up from 9.5 to 12 newton meters. Um, so that's good. So Let's go ahead, we'll get this supercharger off of the mounting plate and we'll reinstall it onto the Sea-Doo.
Hey, real quick, I, I do want to show, I just kind of cleaned out that compressor housing. I got all the corrosion-y salt deposits and everything else out of there. Um, looks way better than it did, and uh, that's pretty much it for this. You'll notice there's some corrosion from the, on the uh, mounting studs here. Um, it's just, that's just what happens when you ride saw. And this ski was very well maintained too. Um, you know, anti-corrosion after salt rides and all that stuff. So there's only so much you can do, but we'll get it cleaned up and uh, let's get this taken back out to the ski and mount it back in. All right, before you put the supercharger in, you're gonna want to take some uh, triple guard grease or marine, marine grease or anything like that and go ahead and put it around uh, the thicker part of the shaft housing here. Uh, you don't want to nick this and this is kind of a sealing surface as well for uh, the oil passage um, so just put a decent amount of uh, grease around here don't want to get grease up on this section here uh, just on this silver part of the supercharger shaft all right and that's looking good there I'm gonna to try to put this in one-handed while I'm holding the camera just so you can see um, but you you kind of just have to wiggle the bottom around the carbon shield bellows uh, shroud there so it just takes a little bit of finagling to kind of get it lined up. Um, but let's go ahead and try this. Just like that. Alright, that's lined up there. Okay, and just once you get there, kind of swivel. And now, you can reach into the uh, compressor wheel and spin it to get those gears lined up on the inside. Uh, but once they're lined up, it'll slide in just like that. That's perfect. Alright, so all we need to do now is put in those three bolts. Um, I recommend kind of just hand threading them to get them started, but don't tighten them all down uh, because you may have to kind of wiggle this the whole supercharger back and forth to get the bolts to line up. Um, so just do one at a time until they're all basically threaded and then you can torque them down. So let's do that now. All right, now that we have all three supercharger bolts in, they're all torqued down. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and reattach the crankcase vent. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, and now that the crankcase vent is reattached, everything's good there. Um, all we need to do is just reattach the charge pipes. So we have the outlet and the ingoing pipe. Um, we'll go ahead and get those attached now. All right, and everything is back together. Everything's good to go. We got the crankcase vent hooked up, superchargers in, uh, all three bolts, and then we have the intercooler piping and the fresh air supply. They're all in there as well. Um, if you remember from the beginning of the video, I mentioned you could do, you could basically check the slip moment without removing the supercharger if you wanted to. Um, and essentially all you would do is take a, uh, like a broom handle or something wood like this, uh, and then shove it into the jet pump, like in between the impeller blades, uh, to prevent it from moving. If you keep the impeller from moving, you're keeping the engine from rotating. Uh, and then in turn, you're keeping that uh, supercharger gear on the PTO from spinning as well. Um, and if you do that, you lock everything up uh, and then you can put your 17 millimeter socket onto the compressor wheel with your dig digital torque wrench and then you can check the slip that way. Um, I've done it in the past. I find that it's just easier to remove the supercharger to check um, because you saw in this case, I needed to make an adjustment anyway. So. You're really just making more work for yourself if you check it uh, with the supercharger in the ski. Um, but aside from that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It looks more complicated than it is. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to just let me know and I'll be happy to answer them.